Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Bridges Academy. Um, this is our fall 2020 series of Bridges Academy, and my name is Lauren Humaneski. We're so happy to have you here today. I know this is a new virtual format, so it's great that you're all joining us. Please note that we will have a period for Q&A today. You may submit questions through the chat feature in Zoom. So if you look at the bottom of your screen within the Zoom window, there will be a chat icon. And if you click on that icon, you'll have the ability to type and submit your question. We will also open it up to questions later in the session. Bridges Academy is a continuing education series for lifelong learners hosted by the University of San Diego's Office of Plan Giving. You all have a tremendous impact on the University of San Diego. The Bridges Endowed Scholarship, supported by the attendees of Bridges Academy, has been awarded to two students per year over the last 15 years. We are so grateful for your support and generosity, and we're happy you're part of the Torero family. This morning, we're excited to welcome Buddy Thomas, the founder and chief planning officer of Superior Planning, Inc. I look forward to introducing him and sharing his background with you in just a few moments. Before that, Aaron Jones, the Director of Major and Planned Giving, would like to say hello and share a few words. Thank you, Laura. Good morning, everyone. Hi, buddy. Hi, Bob. Hi, Agnes. Try to say hi, Lois. Hi, Judy. Um, we have, and everybody else today, uh, first and foremost, uh, welcome, and we miss you. We miss you so much, and um, I'm glad we're able to do this via Zoom, but uh, we are praying every day that at one point we'll get ourselves back together. Um, I want you to know that um, I have been out visiting some of you, Bob and I got together, um, Agnes and I as well. Uh, I'm gonna reach out to each of you after this. And if you feel comfortable, I'd love to meet you, you know, socially distancing outside with masks on, um, you know, just to catch up if you feel comfortable with that. If not, we could do a Zoom as well. but. I miss being in touch with you and seeing you every few weeks during the uh, the semesters at Bridges. I hope you're all staying safe and you're all being well. And I'll just throw this in. Remember to vote, but I'm sure with this crowd, I don't have to ask you to. So anyway, be well. Um, you have my contact information. And if you ever need anything from our office during this time, we are still working remotely and doing the best that we can during this time. God bless you all and have a great day. Buddy, thank you so much for being our speaker today. Um, you are welcome back because your presentations are always uh, so thoughtful, so relevant. And what I like is very understandable. So thank you and everyone enjoy Bridges today. So long. Thank you, Erin. Um, I'll go ahead and introduce Buddy now and then we'll get started in a moment. Buddy Thomas is the founder and chief planning officer of Superior Planning, a San Diego-based multifamily office and registered investment advisor serving affluent families since 1982. He is also the creator of the Super Plan, a pioneering family wealth and relationship management system that provides all current information necessary for family leaders to make important decisions in one comprehensive and easy to use format. As Chief Planning Officer, Buddy is responsible for the strategic planning and implementation progress of each client family, as well as the firm's operations and business development efforts. A graduate of Baldwin Wallace College, a certified financial planner, and an accredited estate planner, he also holds certificates as a chartered life underwriter and chartered financial consultant, and is an NASD registered representative and investment advisor representative with Calton and Associates. Buddy is the author of four books, over 50 published articles, and the producer of the weekly video series, The 55 Second Family Fiduciary. He has presented on the spectrum of family wealth issues to a variety of audiences, including the Financial Planning Association of San Diego, North County Estate Planning Council San Diego, Estate Planning Council of San Diego, University of San Diego's University of the Third Age and Bridges Academy, San Diego State, University's Osher Institute, Sun Life of Canada, Silvergate Bank, San Diego Private Bank, Capital Analyst, Calvin Advisor University, Purposeful Planning Institute, and Tiger 21. He currently serves on the Board of Trustees of the Catholic Community Foundation of San Diego and Build a Miracle. He is a member of San Diego Rotary Club 33 and has served on multiple other service, nonprofit, and financial services industry councils and committees. 
He and his wife, Liz, are members of St. Gregory the Great Catholic Church, live in Scripps Ranch, and have two grown sons, Dominic and George. So let's give Buddy a very warm welcome. We're so excited to have you here today, and thank you for taking the time to be a Bridges Academy speaker. Well, thank you, Lauren, and thank everybody for uh, showing up today virtually. Uh, I'll tell you all about how this all came about here in a minute, but I, I want to introduce Ryan Kimes there. Ryan, you want to give a wave? Hello. Ryan is our implementation officer here at Superior Planning, and uh, he's going to help us today try to do what this presentation, which was supposed to be uh, uh, in person, virtually, and this is our first try at it, so please be patient with us. If everything goes smoothly, it will be one of those miracles. So let's see if I can uh, get us into the program here, and I want to uh, share a screen with you, and uh, can everybody see that? You got it, Ryan? Okay, Lauren, we got it? All right, and uh, thank you, Aaron, um, and thank you, Lauren, and thank all of you folks for tuning in today. Uh, when we started to plan this event back before COVID, uh, you know, things were completely different. We assumed we'd be meeting on campus in person, and um, if it wasn't for Zoom and this kind of technology, who knows when the next time it would have been that we could have got Bridges started up again. So we're happy to have it. It may be a little clunky, like I said, because we're, we're really not used to doing this. But we're going to give it our best shot. What we do know is that we're really happy you're here. And our plan for the next hour is to provide you with the kind of information that made you glad you came. That's always my uh, kind of litmus test is, we're, we're people happy they came. So we're gonna do everything we can to do that for you. Today, we're gonna to talk about some of the effects the pandemic has had on family wealth and some of the practical things that you can do about it, a strategy for you to deal with it. Uh, to get started though, I need to have to ask a few questions so I can tailor the presentation uh, just for you guys. So uh, I can see most of you uh, so please raise your hand in a way that shows up on your screen. Those of you that have the video off, if you could turn it on, then I can, uh, we, we can get a feel for uh, who we're talking to. Uh, this won't take long, so it'll only take a minute or so. So how many married couples uh, do we have that are watching right now together? All right, and uh, how many people are married but their spouse isn't present here today? Uh, okay, and how many are uh, grandparents? And how many are parents? And how many are children with living parents that aren't here right now? And uh, last but not least, uh, how many of you have provided for USD or some other of your favorite charities in your state plans? All right, that's really good to know. All right, great. So uh, before we get into the presentation, uh, I'd, I'd like to tell you uh, one of the reasons or uh, what are my relationship with the university uh, beyond just being a speaker. I'm a member of the, the board of trustees of San Diego Community, Catholic Community Foundation, as, uh, as Lauren mentioned. That we're one of 28 Catholic Community Foundations in the United States. And we just happen to be celebrating our fifth anniversary this year. And uh, even though we're one of the newest uh, uh, Catholic foundations, we're also the, the fastest growing ever. And we're on track to be one of the most prominent in the country in a few years. Uh, President Harris and uh, our director, Gary Rechtenwald, have formed a, uh, an alliance as what they call Anchor Partners. And they're Anchor Partners to support Catholic values in San Diego County it just happens to be 40% Catholic. And being good stewards is a significant part of being a Catholic and, and philanthropic charitable support is a significant element of being a good steward. And um, uh, one commitment that uh, both USD and the Community Foundation have made as anchor partners is to become a state-of-the-art education resource for all of those 
who seek it. And that would be all of you since you're the supporters of the university. But we're also reaching out, reaching out to the broader community. Now, today's uh, presentation is an example of the outreach that the university and the foundation are going to be doing as a joint effort uh, for you and others who, who share our values with the uh, opportunities and resources to, to grow your family wealth and the wealth of our, our community. So for some context, just to give you a little difference between the foundation and the university's foundation, there's a, a general distinction between the two endowments. And as you know, an endowment is when you contribute money and uh, but you're, you're, you're not using that money to support the organization. You're using the earnings of that money to support the organizations indefinitely. It's like perpetual income for the organization. So US, oh, sorry. I'm supposed to do that. Told you it was gonna be good. So USD's uh, foundation is a support organization. And uh, the Catholic Community Foundation is more broad. The USD Foundation is there to, I'm sorry, the USD Endowment is there to support all the different schools that USD has. Arts and Sciences, the Business School, the Engineering School, the Nursing and Health Science, Peace Studies, Law and Leadership, and, and Real Estate. And every one of those things touch family wealth. But when you give to the USD Endowment, it's supporting the university and those schools. If you use a Catholic Community Foundation endowment, it's much more broad reaching. You can, you can direct the money. You could pretty much direct it to anywhere you want. You could direct it to your parish. You could direct it to Catholic charities or any uh, uh, nonprofit that you support. Uh, and, they, and they have donor advised funds at the Catholic Community Foundation where it's actually like a charitable checkbook where you can donate in the beginning of the year or a tax time to get your write off. And then you have this pool of money that you can uh, give to uh, the charities of your choice. So uh, we're here to, to both, both uh, organizations are here to serve you. And you're gonna be hearing a lot more about this community outreach in the months and years to come. And uh, so uh, uh, we're just really excited to be able to announce that. But uh, because of our limited time, we won't get in, get in any details on that today. But if you want to talk more about it, uh, you have Aaron's contact information and mine will be there so that uh, you can talk to each of us about uh, the, uh, uh, either one of the organizations. Just know that there's much more to come and we're here to assist you in, in any way you can. Uh, so now let's get into the presentation. Uh, probably a good idea for me to, to right off the bat to, to talk about family wealth. Uh, this is a picture of my mother and father on their wedding day in August of 1941. It was nine years after the, the, the bottom of the Great Depression and four years before Pearl Harbor. My, uh, that guy. my dad worked on a railroad Sorry. My dad worked on a railroad and my mother was a beautician. She and a couple of her friends opened a, a beauty shop. And uh, that's how they, what they were doing when they met. But uh, like everybody else, when they get married, they usually come to their, to their marriage with a set of values. And then they have a vision of a future together. And then they have some specific goals. Uh, one of my dad's specific goals was he, he really hated paying interest. So he wanted to pay off the mortgage on the house uh, as soon as he possibly could. And uh, he talked to us about that when we were just little kids, how he, he couldn't wait to pay off the mortgage. And then one day, I might have been a teenager at the time, but he took the whole family out to dinner and uh, he actually burned the mortgage paper in the ashtray on the table at the restaurant. And uh, you couldn't do that today, but uh, but I never forget the smile on his face when he completed that goal. But family wealth is more than money. Uh, and, and all the years that we've been working with families and, and uh, since uh, back when we started, I've come to, to the, uh, uh, I've discovered that there are three essential elements to family wealth. And it's not just the money. It's, it's first of all, it's the love that the family has for each other. 
And secondly, it's their collective wisdom. And much of your wisdom, the family wisdom, is passed on from generation to generation. And then there's the, the financial wealth. And sometimes you inherit financial wealth. And most of the time, uh, every family, like my, my parents, they had to start all over again. Um, and uh, of course, like every other family, we have a story about rags to riches and rags and things like that. And I'm sure your families are no different. But uh, also over the years and working with all the families that we work with, we've, we've uh, discovered that there are also three fundamental acts, aspects of every family's financial plan. And when you boil it down, it comes to lifestyle cash flow control and metering, uh, balancing your, your balance sheet or taking care of your assets, which is often referred to as your portfolio, and then your estate plan, which is really an extension of the way you lived your life or your legacy. So it's values, visions, and goals, lifestyle cash flow, portfolio management, and legacy uh, development. And it's all about the family's love, wisdom, and money. So little did my parents know in August of 1941 that within a few months, December, Pearl Harbor would happen and their world would change by a, by a world war. And today, with this pandemic, we're in a different kind of war. We have an invisible enemy. But the uh, disruption of our normal is no less dramatic. The picture on the left is my family's reunion just after September 11, 2001. That's my, my four brothers and all our wives and all our children. And that would have been my parents' 60th wedding anniversary. That's, that's my dad in the center there, down at the, in the, in the, in the middle on the, in the, on the bottom. And uh, my mother had passed away in 1995, so this was six years later. And like then, this year, our normal sense of security has been completely disrupted. But this time, uh, we went from taking completely for granted our ability to come together in groups like this to being isolated and, and even being unable to interact with some of our own family members. And if uh, having to isolate and operate remotely wasn't bad enough, what happened was the most, some of the most, most robust economies ever, ever in the history of the world, from the largest countries to the individual family were all brought to a virtual standstill, threatening almost everybody's sense of financial security. Now, uh, I don't know about you, but uh, this is how I, I looked at this uh, word cloud and, and this is, it, it captured how I was feeling back in, in late March and early April. It was just really scary. Uh, you know, pandemics were something that you read about in the movies or in the history books, and it always happened to somebody else. Uh, but here we were right in the middle of this contagious, dangerous sickness that was deadly. It was unprecedented. We had no idea uh, what to do with it. There was a lot of fear. Uh, we were unprepared. It was, it was unbelievable at times when you thought about it, what was really going on to go from living the way we were, they're just shutting everything down. I, I use the word crazy a lot. Um, and the worst part of it was that uh, uh, the, the helplessness of not knowing how or when it was going to end, who was going to get sick, who wasn't going to get sick. You know, you worry about your family. And as a, a family wealth advisory firm, not only was did it happen to me, but out of the 40 families that we work with were all turning to us and asking us what to do about it. So uh, what we did was all we could do is we, we had to go back to basics. Uh, we had to remind ourselves that every family has their own values, their own vision, and their own goals. That they love each other, and together with their collective wisdom and our wisdom and our processes and the basic, basic principles of family economics, we could help them decide uh, you know, what to do next. But when the context of it all, it was a pretty straightforward exercise because uh, we knew that they had to take care of their cash flow. They had to make sure they had enough money to live on. 
we knew that they had to take care of their assets. We had to look at their investment policy and their portfolio to make sure that was, uh, you know, in order and as protected as possible. And then we had to think about the immediate impact of the, uh, the economy on everything that was going on. So uh, that was our strategy. Our strategy was to go back to basics, revisit their goals. All the families we work with have a set of goals. We revisited the goals and we revisited their, their current situation with regard to cash flow and, um, and their investment policy. So while all that was happening, uh, around June, Aaron and I talked about what might be the most valuable presentation for you today. And uh, that was, you know, when we could start Bridges up again. So if, what she asked me was if I could share um, some of what we were learning about operating in this new environment. And that's where the concept of lessons from the field was born in that conversation. I've been producing these weekly videos, the 55 second family fiduciary for, for a couple of years. And we've had a number of different series. So what we did was uh, we launched a lesson from the field series uh, back uh, in, um, in uh, back last summer. And uh, as of yesterday, we posted our 18th lesson from the field. And, and uh, it looks like, because things keep changing and we're learning every day so that we're learning enough about lifestyle portfolio and legacy that each week we're, we're coming up with a new one. So it, it looks like we've, we've got enough content for the foreseeable future. What we'd like to do today is I'd like to show you four of them to give you a feel for how we see families dealing with the issues. Like every week when I write one, it usually has to do with something that some family did while we were, uh, while we were working with them over the weekend. So if you'd like to see all of them or subscribe to the le weekly uh, email program, we're gonna give you a link at the end of today's presentation where, where you can see them. You'll, you'll be able to see the ones we're gonna show you plus all the other, I uh, think there's, there's over a hundred of them up, up there now. So Aaron and Lauren and I also talked about how this program might work best to answer your questions so you can get as much as possible. So as I show the, each lesson, what I'd like you to do, um, I'll make a, I'll show you the video. And by the way, it's gonna be kind of clunky because if we were in person, I just put it up on the screen and it would be very clear. But because it's coming through Zoom, there's gonna be a delay. We've got subtitles there. But um, if, if anything you hear uh, triggers a question, just type the question into the chat box and then we'll have all the questions at the end of it so that we can have a conversation about it. And then we'll unmute and we can all talk to each other as much as we'd like to. Um, all right, so just so you know this, another little bit of confusion. The original series, it wasn't episode one, two, three, four. This was actually episode one, two, seven, and 11. So if that seems a little confusing, please just, uh, we're just gonna look at the four today and they're gonna be the four basics. I apologize for any confusion. It'll, it'll cause, just know we're gonna have a video on cash flow, one on portfolio, one on goals, and uh, one on legacy. So now Ryan, uh, don't forget to type your questions in the chat box. Ryan is gonna play the video, so I'm gonna stop sharing. Ryan's gonna start sharing, he's gonna show you the video, and then I'm gonna come back on, and we're gonna see if we can do this as, as smooth as possible. So Ryan, I'll stop sharing, and you can take it from here. 55 second family fiduciary lesson from the field number one, cash flow is king. We were all blindsided by the pandemic. Few saw it coming and no one predicted its economic impact. When the world panicked, everyone needed cash. I've seen this play out hundreds of times. Disaster hits, you need cash, you need it now. Once the economy is floundering or your business is sinking, it's too late. You ever try to get a bank loan when you're stuck? Those who thrive through the ups and downs of their financial lives have cash reserves before crisis hits whether you're a large financial institution, a small business, or simply a family on a budget. Something bad happens without cash on hand, you're in trouble. From an investment policy standpoint, cash reserves cannot be an afterthought. Protect yourself, it must be a permanent part of your investment strategy. Okay, so there you have it. Cash flow is king. If you're like most people back before the pandemic, 
It probably bothered you if you had too much cash on hand because you, you wanted to make sure it was put to work. Well, all of that changed during the first few weeks when the money markets froze before the government acted. Now, having at least a year's cash reserve to supplement your income for your lifestyle doesn't sound like such a bad idea. So we'll get on to the next one on investment policy. Ryan, take it away. 55 second family fiduciary lessons from the field number two, investment policy matters. With the world in turmoil, you may be asking, how can I invest now? Much of your uncertainty probably has to do with the volatility of the markets. But we all know there's more to life than stocks and bonds. The key is that we're gonna have a reliable investment policy against the markets pushing you together, offsetting each other's highs and lows, and working for you instead of against you. Anything you can invest in can be categorized as either cash, bonds, stocks, or tangibles, like real estate, oil, and gold. These markets are like pistons in a car engine. They're never all up or down at the same time. If you want to buy low and sell high, they're almost telling you when to do it. An investment policy keeps you in control. How comfortable are you with yours? For about 11 years from March of 09 until February of 2020, other than a few minor corrections, the various markets the bond market, the stock market, the money market, and even the tangible market were, they were relatively predictable. And they were mostly profitable even for the, uh, the most, uh, the least disciplined investor. And having an investment policy seemed almost un unnecessary. But within five weeks after the shutdown, the, the stock market had lost 34.7% of its value and interest rates dropped to almost zero. And no one will ever know how bad it would have been if the government hadn't intervened. Historic market shocks like these tend to repeat themselves when we least expect it. That's why having and maintaining your family investment policy, which is a measurable investment plan that's tied to your goals, and it's personalized for you and your family specific needs, it's one of the few ways that you have to protect yourself. All right, Ryan, take it away. 55 second family fiduciary lessons from the field number seven. Goals are like magnets. Once you're committed to a goal, nothing can stop you from looking for ways to achieve it. Victor Frankl, while confined to a Nazi concentration camp, imagined himself lecturing on psychotherapy. And then he went on to teach the world we can control our attitudes despite our circumstances. Disasters are a regular part of life and everyone gets their share. Purposeful goals have a way of drawing you to them without regard for what's going on around you. Bully and Hill said, when the beat comes, accept it as a signal that your plans are not sound. Rebuild those plans and set sail once more towards your coveted goal. Are you still inspired by your goals? How have things changed? Where is the new path? What can you do right now to get back on track? So just like investing, when the economies are healthy and things are going your way, goal attainment seems relatively easy. But when your goals don't have to be your goal, your goals don't have to be very clear or very strong. But when things get tough and you're not sure where you're going or uh, what's going on around you, if your goals aren't crystal clear and you lack a profound commitment, the attraction of your goals can fade and it won't take much for, for you to lose your way. Now on to the last video. 55 second family fiduciary, lesson from the field number 11. It's not about you. As a family fiduciary, it's a big mistake to keep your family wealthy so it's yours alone. Ebenezer Scrooge realized it in a dream when he got a peek at the future and didn't like what he saw. Scrooge said, before you're a leader, Success is all about growing yourself. When you become a leader, success is all about growing others. In his insightful book, Borrowed from Your Grandchildren, Dennis Chapman reveals the secrets of 100 year families who manage to keep their wealth growing by continually grooming the next generation. True family wealth is much bigger than any one person. What do you think your family wealth is going to look like in 100 years? 
this lesson involves a significant paradigm shift. And it comes from focusing on survival in the present to looking at the bigger picture, your life within the context of that which came before you and what's gonna come next. So uh, many of you have accumulated way, uh, well, not way more, but more financial wealth than you'll spend in your lifetime. So you have the responsibility of setting up your affairs for those who you're gonna leave behind. You have a unique opportunity. You can lay the groundwork, at least for the next generation or two, or for whoever you want your wealth to go to, to do more good than harm, to carry on. And you want them to be responsible stewards of your family wealth when it's their turn. Now, I, I am extremely lucky. I had loving parents, solid Catholic values. We all went to Catholic schools. They did everything they could to support and educate us to make our way in the world. A few months into the pandemic, my four brothers and I started doing Zoom calls. And we've been doing it weekly now ever since. And it's been great. We, we've reconnected in a way that we haven't done since we all lived at home and, and we're all over 60. Um, on our call this weekend, my youngest brother, who took over my dad's business when he retired, was filling us in on how he's grooming his son and his son's progress as they plan their transition as he retires and turns it over to his son. Now, if you look at the picture, the 2001 picture, the front row, there's a little kid on the left in the front row at the bottom. That's my brother's son who's taken over the business, and it looks like it's... Uh, it's going to work out for them. You know, we never know because no one knows what's coming next or how things are really going to turn out. But what we do know is by loving our families and acting as responsible stewards of our family wealth, we're doing all we can to stay ahead of things and, and position ourselves for whatever may be in store. Uh, as I can, as best I can tell, the, the one question that I, that I think we can all ask ourselves to get us through any times like this, or, uh, and, and whatever's gonna come next, or what can I do today to make things better? And, and what can I do today to keep it going and, and pass my, my love, my wisdom, and my money on to, to those that I care about most, whether it be my family or uh, those organizations that I support. So that's what we've been doing here. That's kind of a peek inside what uh, uh, the families that we're working with have been doing. And I, I hope uh, you all uh, can, can get a little something from it and, and take it and, and use it in your lives. And I want to just uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, here's that link to the videos. And we can go to the, uh, the questions now if, uh, if we have any. Lauren? Yes. See any questions come in through the chat, but I will um, change the settings so that anybody who would like to unmute themselves can do so and ask a question or if, um, any comments, buddy. Is there? Yes, it looks like. Hello, there Kat. Hi. Um, you were explaining uh, lessons from the field in a part that said uh, how to teach your children and grandchildren. You mentioned a book. I couldn't write fast enough, but it's besides the book. What's the best way to get the conversation started when, when they're little even? Oh, what a great question. First of all, before I forget, the name of the book is Borrowed from Your Grandchildren. And the author's name is Dennis Jaffe, J-A-F-F-E. And... Um, Thank you. Uh, the answer to your, your second question about getting the conversation started, it's to be as creative as you can. Uh, we have one of our clients, uh, when they graduate from college and they get their first job, uh, now this is later, she, she puts $3,000 in a Roth IRA for them so that they have it and then she, she explains what it is, she tells them that they need an investment policy for it and that gets the conversation started. 
uh, a younger, if they're, if they're uh, younger, uh, we've had some families talk to their children who are really into gaming, video gaming, and they uh, mentioned to them that, you know, you had some birthday money and you may want to buy some, some stock in some uh, gaming companies. So it's whatever they can relate to. Uh, some families have uh, put money aside for them to donate to a charity. And they say, here's a thousand dollars and it's yours to donate to a charity. But um, uh, before you do, I'd like you to tell me why you're doing it and how you're gonna follow up on that to see what the charity did with the money. So it's just look for something that they're interested in. And that's probably the biggest uh, challenge because most of us, as we get older, we know what's worked for us and we want to kind of impose that on, on our children. But our children have a mind of their own and, and at a younger age, they, may, they are starting to understand what the world is. So it's really important to find out from their point of view what they're interested in and then introduce how, how they can be responsible with their money doing something that... Uh, that uh, they understand and they have a passion for and that they can get excited about? That's a great question because that's a, as always the question and we always have to keep our eyes open for opportunities to do that. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Any other questions? Any questions about the Catholic Community Foundation? Um, any questions about cash flow, uh, your investment policy, uh, 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 setting goals, uh, uh, how to track goals? Any uh, questions about uh, uh, legacy and estate planning? I am, uh, I'm all yours at the moment. Yeah. What about the link? to your videos. Uh, that was the previous slide. And there it is right there. You go to our website, superplan.com. And uh, you go to the bottom of any page and you could sign up for the videos. And if you go to resources, uh, it actually has a, uh, uh, all of the hundred or so videos are right there and all the playlists. So if you want to binge watch 55 second videos, uh, if you can't sleep at night, there's something that you can do. Thank you. And buddy, maybe you could touch on this. I know when you spoke at Bridges Academy about a year or a year and a half ago, you talked a bit about the process of when you're starting to work with a new family and what that looks like and kind of how you get to know them and how you work with them from there. Would you mind touching on that a little bit? Well, well the, um, what we do is, uh, our families hire us for a year to kind of retrofit there and, and uh, to look at what they're doing and to see, you know, where the strengths and weaknesses are. But the first thing we do is we uh, have a, uh, uh, a goal setting meeting. And the first part of that goal setting meeting is to talk about uh, how they feel about money. We have a, we have a, um, a 36 question questionnaire where uh, usually it's a couple and the couple both answers their, uh, their, their questionnaires. It's, it's 36 questions about money and how you feel about it, what you want to do, what you don't want to do. And then we match up the, the, uh, the, uh, their answers. And we use that for a dialogue to really get into the areas. We all know where they agree, but the areas where they answer the questions is different. It's not necessarily, uh, necessarily that they disagree, but they have these different views. And it's just a, it's a wonderful conversation because you really get down into philosophically into the foundation of your values. And then uh, what that does is it helps them um, uh, crystallize their vision, you know, where they want to go and, uh, and then at the same time, it helps them uh, establish these uh, SMART goals that are, that are uh, uh, specific and measurable and achievable and realistic and have a, and are time bound. So uh, it's, it's a great conversation to have 
and, and very few couples actually, I mean, you know each other so well that you just kind of, they work together, but uh, sitting down with a third party and having them uh, kind of facilitate that and writing it down really gets you, gets you a good start. And then from there, where it's easier, it's easy to, to look at the lifestyle cash flow and to write an investment policy and to really think about what this purposeful estate is. And, uh, uh, and that's the kind of stuff that really gets us excited because anytime we can help a family get, get a clear picture of who they are and uh, what they want and then help them get there, uh, that's why we're in business. And uh, uh, our, our product is the transformation of the family from one level of operation uh, to uh, a, a more uh, efficient, effective way of getting what they want and, uh, and passing it along. Thanks for that question, Lauren. That was great. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing. I just wanted to thank you, buddy, so much for being here. And maybe you can put up your slide um, again if you're able to with your contact information um, as well. This is the one for the he shared today and he has additional videos there. But um, this is the contact information for Buddy and then also for Aaron who spoke at the beginning in the Office of Plan Giving. Um, thank you so much, Buddy, for being here. I hope everybody enjoyed this morning and we look forward to welcoming you back to Bridges Academy in the future. Well, thank you. Uh, this is great. It's a great forum. I, I can't wait to see everybody in person, but uh, this sure is better than nothing. And uh, please call Aaron uh, because uh, you have a friend in Aaron, that's for sure. And uh, look for stuff from the Catholic Community Foundation and the university. We'll be, we'll be, uh, we're working on that and uh, we're, we can't wait to show you what's going to come next. Thank you so much, buddy. And thank you Thanks. all for being here. We look forward to seeing you at the next Bridges Academy Lecture.